Hello friends, my name is Bharat and the call sign is Victor Uniform 2, November, Foxtrot Kilo. This video is about ham radio. Have you ever heard of ham radio? Never? Come on, let me tell you what ham radio is. Ham radio is a hobby in which you experiment with radio frequencies. It is a lot more fun than you can ever imagine. Though it sounds very dry, just bear with me for a few seconds and you will know how much fun this entire hobby is going to be. So at the crux of the entire hobby, what happens is the government gives you permission to transmit on a range of frequencies. The frequencies start from the very low medium frequency, which, which is around 1.8 gigahertz or 1.8 megahertz and it goes all the way up to 6 gigahertz. So you have a lot of frequency spots as shown in the figure. Now you might ask why do you need so many frequency spots? The reason for that is each of the frequency spots behave very differently. The propagation conditions and the way the waves propagate at these frequencies are all different and it's fun to experiment at each of these frequencies. And the cost of the entire license for what the government gives you for the entire spectrum is absolutely very inexpensive. Now you may ask why does the government give you so many frequencies at such a low price and I'll tell you the reason. Initially when the radio waves were initially discovered or should I say invented at uh, that time, the entire of the radio spectrum was free to use. But slowly and slowly, as the commercial utilization of these radio frequencies started, the frequencies became more and more uh, being started getting used for the commercial applications. And there were lesser and lesser frequency spots available for the researchers. Very soon, they realized that unless you do proper research on this radio frequencies, you cannot improve. And all this new uh, new invention that you see like the 3G, 4G and 5G and all are all outcomes of such experiments. So the government knew that they need to give these experimenters some space where they can experiment freely. And that's the reason that we get all these frequency spots uh, for a very low cost. So okay, you're going to say, uh, what should I do with all the spectrum that the government gives it to me? Uh, you may say, I am not even a very serious experimenter. What am I supposed to do? Or you may say, I don't even know what radio spectrum is and how am I supposed to get into this? So broadly speaking, what I've done is I've classified all these different things that you can do using the radio spectrum into four different difficulty levels. At the first difficulty level, that's the very basic entry level difficulty. What you can do is you can learn to communicate with people. So communication is fun when you're talking with radios it's more like you make friends across the country it's um, you can make friends across the world you can use walkie talkies which works in the vhf band or you can use hf uh, radio sets which can with which you can communicate across uh, the countries so uh, that's like the primitive version of the facebook as people call it so that's the basic thing so what do you learn with this you basically learn a lot of things uh, when you are doing this it's not only fun at the same time the learning experience is like uh, how do you communicate on a half duplex channel uh, that's something technical that you get to learn uh, apart from that the second thing that you can do is if you're more into things like contesting so you can take part into contests so there are a lot of contexts which are uh, held uh, worldwide, uh, also locally, probably by your local clubs around. You just have to look uh, around and I'm sure you'll find some of the other ham, ham club around you. Probably you were not aware of uh, this all these days, but there are plenty of them in the uh, in the country. So the contests are often like, uh, I can give you an example where uh, it's called a fox hunt, wherein uh, uh, the, uh, the organizers hide a transmitter somewhere. And you're supposed to uh, look for the transmitter. So generally it will be hidden in an area of around 30 to 40 kilometers and uh, you go around searching for it the entire day and then probably in the evening you find it. And it's so much thrilling to go and uh, find these uh, transmitters which are hidden. Uh, that's one activity. And there are other activities wherein the competition is about how many contacts you can make on a day and which requires a very uh, deep understanding of the kind of communication and the propagation uh, conditions in your environment uh, and in the places around so that you can make lot of lots of contacts uh, so uh, if you're if you're the kind of uh, guy who likes contesting so that's an activity that you can do then then the third activity that you can do is adventure obviously if you're into trekking or things like that and if you're into serious trekking and if you go into mountainous areas you are not sure of getting mobile networks so how, what do you do? So you can, uh, you generally have to rely upon walkie talkies. So there are two options with you now. 
either you can go go ahead and buy a citizen band or walkie talkie uh, citizen band is the band which is free for use uh, with the public and it doesn't require a license but the problem with that is uh, the power le power levels are very less so the ranges that you get with these radars with these radios are uh, very less uh, secondly uh, because it's a free band almost everyone's crowding onto that band and it's uh, no real fun to work on that band now the fourth thing that you can do at this difficulty level is uh, uh, is to help people during emergencies i'm sure people go ahead give uh, money for charity and all whenever they hear about things like floods or earthquakes and all so instead of just giving them money uh, it's sometimes better to go and offer them services so one of the ways you can offer them services is uh, by helping the government and the other bodies establish the initial communication link so whenever there's an earthquake or any national calamity the first things which get hit is the communication the mobile towers go off and then there's an absolute communication blockade so there's the time when the hams go in set uh, their equipments and uh, they talk to people and uh, they are able to relay messages across uh, the different uh, places where they need help so basically what ham radio teaches uh, teaches you is how to quickly deploy a radio station how to communicate messages how to put up an antenna and putting up an antenna is generally a, uh, not a very safe thing to do during a natural calamity because if it's a, a lightning uh, if it's a place where it's flooded so there's a high, heavy chance that there might be lightnings happening so you will learn how to put up a very good antenna with the lightning arresters and things like that so uh, these is these are the things that you can do at the first difficulty level going at the next difficulty level uh, if you're into more of signal processing or computer science oriented guy so what you can do is uh, there are people who build modems or they get into digital communication so they use radio to communicate digital data they uh, also use there are other other techniques called slow scan tv and other uh, the normal fast scan tv in which they are able to send digital images and uh, data across uh, different countries and different uh, stations so you can come up with new protocols uh, the major challenge being how do you transmit more and more data uh, with uh, uh, by reducing the amount of power that you uh, deliver and it's often called the signal to noise ratio so uh, your aim is to minimize uh, to achieve the highest data rate possible with the uh, lowest signal to noise ratio or uh, to put it more simply uh, to optimize your transmission now the third level of difficulty that you can think about is uh, going for satcom so that's this is a very really interesting avenue and something which interests me a lot uh, so there are a lot of satellites uh, i guess so far more than 100 satellites have been launched by hams uh, for the purpose of hams and they often called us oscars or orbital satellites carrying amateur radio there are many of them which uh, revolve in the low earth orbit and uh, you can work those satellites so what you can do is you generally speak up to the satellites and then the satellites act as a repeater and then it transforms the signal down so uh, that's an interesting area to work on and there is also a geosynchronous uh, satellite which has been launched uh, recently by the uh, qatar i guess is the qatar amateur radio club so that's another interesting thing that you can uh, uh, try once you become a ham uh then there are other things uh, like you can even uh, talk to astronauts so most of the astronauts uh, in the iss or the people who go out to the outer sky they are often uh, ham radio licensed so during the spare time they often speak down to the earth uh, people people on the earth uh, and uh, that will be a very thrilling experience to speak to the astronauts when they are up above in the sky and all of this happens with a very small handheld often happens with this very small handled uh, walkie talkie and you connect it to an antenna pointed towards it and you get to learn a lot of things like how the satellites move and uh and uh, what kind of doppler corrections that you do and a lot of technical details in it and then the final level of difficulty is called home brewing it's like uh, when you're guru of everything and you know almost all of the electronics uh then you can start building your own radio equipments and uh that is the ultimate thing that you can do in ham radio so now you might ask this like this looks to be a very uh a difficult uh, hobby doesn't it no absolutely not it's not a difficult hobby there are people in this from all walks of life there are people who are businessmen there are people who are students 
uh, the doctors, engineers, almost almost everyone from every profession people are there. So this proves, this goes to prove that it's a, a not a very difficult hobby to get into. And once you get into it, uh, you keep uh, practicing and you'll get better and better at it. And you start uh, understanding a lot of these uh, technical jargons. And uh, uh, over time, you will become very conversant with it. So uh, that's uh, those are the things that uh, you can do uh, with uh, ham radio. So now you know a lot of things that you can do with ham radio. Uh, now the question is, uh, most of these activities that I have told you involves a second party. I mean, uh, you're going to send an image or a data to someone else, right? So you might be wondering how many people are there really across the world? So is this a very small community? In fact, no. Uh, there are There is a very huge population of uh, ham radios across the world. Uh, to give you some of the sm uh, figures which is approximately correct probably a uh, census which may not be very uh, may not be the latest census but then they might be close uh, numbers so I got these numbers from the Wikipedia so US has more than 8.3 lakh hams uh, Japan has around four and a half lakhs uh, China has around one and a half lakh so there are a lot of hams around the world but India has a population of only 15,000 so uh, we are actually trying to increase this number now. Uh, we are trying to educate more and more people about ham radio. And the thing is, uh, I'm sure even after listening to all of this, I'm sure you're interested and I want you might be wanting to become a ham by now. Uh, but the reason why India has such a small number of hams is not lack of interest, as you might be feeling right now. It's mostly because of lack of uh, awareness about ham radio or the hobby like this existing. So now that you are aware of uh, this, I am sure you'll be uh, willing to join into this uh, uh, beautiful hobby of uh, ham radio. And uh, once I explain these things to most of the people, these are the myths which I often hear. So one of the myths is uh, uh, people consider uh, ask me is ham radio radio jockey. I'm sure by now you uh, by now you know that we are not into the entertainment business and ham radio is in no ways a uh, radio jockey. It's more about communicating messages. It's more about technical, technically understanding how the messages transmit and things and things like that. And uh, some people feel that ham is dying because of internet. No, that's again a myth. Ham is not dying because of the internet. People who were always interested in uh, RF communication or uh, who are fascinated with the communication equipments, then they were always there. I mean, the numbers have not changed. They have always been there in the ham community and they still happen to join the ham community. So the even though the internet facilitates communication of messages, people who join ham radio are not for simply communication of messages, but that's because they are interested in learning what happens on the back, back end of uh, the mobile phones. So uh, no, ham is not dying because of internet and it has, the numbers also prove that they have always been almost the same numbers. There's not been drastic changes in the numbers. Third is language is a barrier is what they say when, uh, because I told you that people can talk across the countries. So you might feel, how do I speak to a German guy? So uh, language is a barrier generally when you're speaking normally, but ham radio teaches you how to surpass all these barriers. There, there are a lot of radio standard terms, once which you uh, understand and you start using them, people with any language uh, can communicate with you. They can at least communicate the basic uh, information that they want to share. Uh, probably during emergencies, they can communicate the locations, the conditions and things like that. So uh, this is another very uh, interesting aspect of ham radio where uh, it teaches you how to surpass the, uh, surpass the language uh, barrier and communicate your information very effectively. And another thing which I often hear is uh, people generally feel it's not a problem to read it once in a while when you're experimenting. No, it's not true. Uh, in case if you're caught experimenting with the radio waves and if you don't have a license, you might get yourself into serious trouble. So what you can do is if you're really interested into experimentation aspect of the uh, ham radio, then why don't you just go ahead and grab a license for yourself? It's really easy. So I'm sure and by now you might be pumped up and be thinking, how do I get the license? The getting of the license in India is very easy. So generally, uh, the Wireless Planning Commission of India grants you the licenses. The licenses come in two variants. One is called the Restricted Grade and second is the, called the General Grade. Restricted Grade of License uh, uh, gives you lesser power levels to transmit. 
uh, and it also has few restrictions on the modes of communications that you can uh, use whereas the general grade gives you power to uh, transmit higher RF powers and it gives you some extra privileges in the uh, modes of uh, transmissions generally it gives you uh, flexibility to use the digital modes of communication as well in the HF band so uh, apart from these two the both the grades are almost the same uh, the cost uh, to in order to get these licenses you need to answer a very simple test it's somewhat like a driving test I, I can say because whenever you use a shared resource as I have told you in the radio frequency uh, spectrums which I have shown you it's all a shared resource so whenever you use a shared resource you always have to answer a test like, just like uh, when you try to use the road for instance you have to answer the driving test so that you don't uh, collide with someone else or you know at least the basic rules of driving similarly the government will test you for uh, the basic knowledge of using the radio frequency and uh, other things so that it facilitates uh, once you start using the shared uh, spectrum it will help you as well as uh, the other party not conflicting so uh, there is a simple test uh, the test costs you 100 rupees and generally it doesn't take more than a month preparation to uh, get pro properly prepared for the test and then the license cost once you pass the test is rupees 2000 for lifetime so just pay 2000 rupees and you get a 20 years uh, license so uh, that's how uh, inexpensive this hobby uh, can get uh, now uh, you might f uh, so I'll give you a very brief about uh, the uh, test so the test basically tests you on uh, two aspects one is the rules and regulations wherein you learn the protocols uh, of how to communicate over a half duplex channel as the ham channels are generally uh, and uh, the second portion is the electronics portions where uh, you learn how to uh, you learn the basics of the radio communication and uh, you learn a lot about um, uh, a, lot, a lot of electronics uh, details and uh, this paper is exempted for the electronics graduates uh, people who have studied electronics in probably their engineering so electrical electronics and diploma uh, in, in, in India is exempted uh, but for others uh, they might find uh, the uh, they might feel that this is a difficult uh, subject to answer but uh, fear not it's a very easy paper to answer uh, people uh, children from 12 years onwards can answer the can take the test and there are a lot of uh, young children around 12 years who have passed this exam so I can assure you that uh, you can easily pass this uh, test if you are interested so uh, that's what ham radio is and uh, we'll be continuing uh, in the future videos with more about the syllabus and how to answer the tests and uh, we'll have a lot of videos following this so uh, so that you can get prepared uh, for your tests uh, so all the best I am sure you all be jo joining the ham radio community very soon bye bye 73